Hey, welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. Today on our show, we're gonna talk about debt. I know it's one of those subject matters that everyone has usually uh, within their household, but we're specifically gonna talk about mortgages. I'm gonna teach you a little bit more about how to look at debt, uh, the history of debt, whether or not you should be paying off your debt, things like mortgages or investing. We're gonna put that all together today on our show. But before we get started, make sure to smash that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. So back long ago in the 20th century, which sounds crazy, but it wasn't that long ago, it was over 100 years, barely. It wasn't uncommon for folks to invite close friends and family over, essentially for a barbecue. And what they would do at this barbecue was burn their mortgage. Let that sink in for a second. Kind of like a a second housewarming, if you will. I mean, the debt, of course, at the time that they got together was satisfied and the people at this party were meant to celebrate the homeowner's release uh, from what usually amounted to their biggest financial burden. By the way, that's not too dissimilar to today, right? When I talk to clients for nearly two decades now, the largest debt happens to be the mortgage and actually the largest value or asset happens to be the home. Now, while more prevalent in the early 1900s, these parties, this was when you know there was larger down payments and there were really more short-term home loans that would prevail, which is totally different than today, right? This ritual though kept momentum throughout the century. If you look at history, it was actually a centerpiece of a lot of episodes on certain shows like the iconic show MASH. Yeah, I think Colonel Potter's home in Hannibal, Missouri and the show All in the Family with Arches and his home in Queens. Now I might be dating myself a little bit, but those of you watching and listening, might know what I'm talking about here. Now, while mortgage burning parties, if you will, haven't necessarily gone extinct, they're definitely not viral, you know, they're much more rare these days and for a couple reasons. First and foremost, 30 year loans, they weren't around then. There's also refinancing, excessive leveraging, basically think of interest only loans, and then the overall mobility. I mean, there's far fewer people ever paying off a mortgage. And as a matter of decorum here on the show today, you know, in some circles, these parties, if you were to throw them, might actually be considered bragging about one's lot in life. I mean, like, look at me, I paid off my mortgage, right? But now while the idea of a mortgage, what I want to share today on the show, the idea of a mortgage burning party might sound fun. And really the idea of not sending out a huge chunk of cash each month might actually even sound better. Here's what I want to share today. It might be a little controversial. So let this thing sink in. All right. Paying off one's mortgage might not make the most financial sense. It really comes down to two main factors, cost and expected return. Your cost is your interest rate, right? The expected return essentially if the capital is invested is the growth of money. Those are your two factors. So let me give you an example. If a mortgage right now, we're sitting here in mid 2023, if it's a a year old for many of us out there watching and listening, the interest rate is likely around, let's call it 3%. If an investment hypothetically is paying 5%, holding off on paying the mortgage is probably the prudent move. Why? Interest rate arbitrage. Sounds pretty fancy, right? Let me give you an example. Say hard work or good fortune has you holding $200,000 in cash right now and your mortgage stands at $100,000. Paying off the debt and investing the remaining 100, so basically, right, you take the 100 from the 200, pay off the pay off the debt and you're investing the 100,000, right? You have left, you would earn $5,000 on a 5% hypothetical rate of return. That's a net capital of $105,000 at the end of the year. Now, if you were to invest the full $200,000, essentially not paying off the $100,000 mortgage, the net capital at year's end would amount to 107,000. Now, here's the math how it works. $200,000 earning 5% less the $100,000 debt and the $3,000 interest payment hypothetically on that debt. You can see here, it might make sense to hold the debt. Here's the takeaway. As long as growth is greater than cost, having debt is a sound decision. Remember that when you look at your finances, if you're investing, right, you can refer back to some of the episodes I spoke about right around, should I invest or pay off debt first? Understand this may not be the nicest way to say it, but debt is typically a symptom of an underlying disease. A lot of people look at debt like, oh my gosh, I'm disease ridden. I'm using, you know, if using that vernacular, no, that's the symptom of something. Now that something might've been overspending for many of us at that, that's usually the case. It might've been something unexpected, maybe medical. So whatever it is, if you're going to look at paying down debt first and foremost, categorize your debt, I spoke about this, understand what the debt is, and then ultimately relate that to your interest, your cost, and then ultimately if you have cash to pay it, or if you wanna look at paying it down over time, see if the investments pan out over that same time period to grow at a further rate than the cost of interest rate. Again, interest rate arbitrage. Hope you enjoyed that today. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the Make Your Money Matter show so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember to make your money matter.